Hello, YTPC. Ethan, Parsimonious Piper here. No, today I do not have any morsels for mental mandication. Instead, today I've got some interesting pipes to show you guys. No, they're not pipes by Lee. Well, at least not to begin with. We're going to talk about Lord Davenport. Lord Davenport pipes were sold primarily through ads in men's magazines like Esquire. Uh, many pipes were sold that way. Pipe by Lee was sold that way, although not exclusively. They also did have uh, some retail outlet. A Henry Davenport applied for a patent for a new gadget to, uh, to, to reduce the slurpiness of uh, pipes. And he called it the magic stem. He applied for that patent in 1938. It was granted in 1939. Now, why is that important? Well, that's important because this pipe right here, and let's take a closer look. This is a Davenport pipe. And if you look at the close up, you can see that patent is pending. Now that patent was granted in 1939. So this pipe has to be no newer than 1939. I think that's kind of neat. Now, Henry Davenport later, uh, just a couple years later, applied for another patent. And this one, uh, was granted in 1941. Why is that important? Well, let's keep marching on through time. This square panel billiard right here has that second patent on it, but let's take a closer look. Nice, pretty little square panel billiard, saddle stem, if you look at the stamping on that, that has both patents. It is likely, since neither of those is patent pending, it is likely that this is a 1942, 1943 pipe, shortly after that second patent on the right was, uh, was granted. Now, let's take a look at what this patent actually is. If you look at the overhead shot of the bowl, you can just barely see a little tip of metal there. Well, if I push the stem in, that little bit of metal pokes into the bowl. That is supposed to, uh, to loosen up any dottle that's clogging your airway and help to uh, free up the draw on the pipe. And here you can see with the stem completely disassembled, what that mechanism that he got his patent for looks like. Uh, that uh, spring just keeps the stem poking back out so you can uh, you can push that magic stem into the bowl to get it nice and clean. Let us take a look at this. This lovely saddle stem billiard. Another Lord Davenport. I didn't zoom in quite as close so that you could see the, uh, the stamping on this. This has the later of the two patents. And as you will see in the next picture, it has 7.5 stars. Now you're asking yourself, but I thought only Pipe by Ali had seven point stars. Look at those beauties up close. Well, I might have thought so too. But Lord Davenport apparently had those stars at some point in time. Now, let's take a look at this one. Here we have a saddle stemmed apple tomato shape with two seven point stars closer look you can see those nice shiny seven point stars that is a lee's magic stem same patent number now the plot thickens we have Lord Davenport pipes with seven-point stars. We have Lee's 
with seven point stars. And yet the two companies were never registered at the same address. They apparently did some collaboration together. Now let's take a look at another example that I have. This is a nice Rhodesian. It's a Lee. But when you look at the stars on this, these are five point stars. Now let's take a look at this little Rhodesian. Five point metal inlaid stars. But you see that this one's a Lord Davenport. Apparently, Lee and Lord Davenport shared this technology together over the span of at least a few years. The importance of this to my Lee collection and the reason I went ahead and got these, I, I have... I have three each of the D Lord Davenport's with the, the stars and three of the Lee's with the stars and the magic stem. So they're all, all six magic stems with stars. I, I, I went ahead, I, I've collected uh, six of those just because my previous thinking had been that uh, Lee, uh, based on, on what I've read around, was that Lee transitioned to the five point metal stars sometimes in sometime in the mid 50s it looks like that transition happened earlier however because the transition happened while lee and lord davenport were still in cahoots uh in some way and Le lord davenport seems to have disappeared around 1953 so those five point stars must have been introduced no later than 1953 and that pushes all of my seven point pipes older than I thought. Not necessarily as late as mid 1950s, but uh, the early 1950s at the latest. Well, this is the kind of thing that you find when you really, you start digging into an obscure brand, uh, collaboration between two old pipe makers, uh, one of which disappeared sooner than the other both of which are kind of lost in the, the shadows of uh, pipe history here. Um, fascinating stuff to me, at least. I, I find these all very interesting. And uh, Pipedia only lists uh, four shapes as being known uh, Lord Davenport shapes, and square panel billiard was not one of them. So I've got a pipe shape that Pipedia wasn't aware of. I probably ought to drop them a note. Well, I hope you found this little uh, foray into the history before Pipe by Lee, going back at least into the late 30s with Lord Davenport. I hope you found that interesting. I certainly have, and I'm still enjoying the hunt. If any of you come up with any solid information about this collaboration, or about my beloved Pipes by Lee. I'd appreciate hearing about it. And with that, light something you like. I'm about to. Enjoy your afternoon.